Welcome back to my channel Techie Blossom. Today I wish to share my knowledge on Kotlin. Here I will touch base upon basic information about Kotlin that will motivate you to learn this language. So why you should watch this video? This video is essentially for those who have just started learning any programming language. Not a problem if Kotlin is your first programming language. I am sure you gonna love it because of its crisp and clean syntax. If you are a seasoned developer, you might be thinking, why I need to learn another language when you know about other languages which are based on the same JVM stack and even are there for decades. Well, there is no good or bad reason to start any language at any point of time. You can skip some languages in your career due to some various factors. But believe me, learning a new language does not take much time. In fact, it adds another weapon in your quiver. You never know for what next opportunity you are preparing for and Kotlin now is fairly popular so that makes it right time to learn this language if you are familiar with any other jvm language like java kotlin will be easier for you this video is going to give you a 10000 feet view of kotlin you will get to know about its history its creator and why this language is coming in top 5 languages in 2022 so let's start with history of Kotlin. Kotlin is developed by JetBrains and it's open source. The source code is secured by Kotlin Foundation. Kotlin Foundation is an organization which is sponsored by JetBrains and Google. It's a non-profit entity and hence Google and JetBrains combined cover its operational cost. In 2010, JetBrains started designing and developing Kotlin. In July 2011, JetBrains revealed project Kotlin. In Feb 2012, Kotlin was made open source under the license Apache 2.0. And as of now, there are more than 400 contributors who are continuously contributing to this open source project and its ecosystem. After four years in the year 2016, Kotlin 1.0 was released and attracted many more developers. But it wasn't enough until 2017 when Google announced Kotlin as the first class language to create Android applications. Android being already a key mobile OS, developers started to learn this new language. That's the history and now more than 4 million developers are creating applications using Kotlin language to build their apps for various platforms like Android, iOS, data science, server side and client side applications. So just for your information, Kotlin is a programming language. It's not a framework. It's functional as well as object-oriented programming language. Now you might be wondering where all Kotlin is used so that if you start learning it, mastering it, which applications you will be able to make. The list is pretty interesting. Android, iOS, embedded systems, desktop applications, and web applications. Yes, you can create all these applications using Kotlin. Even nowadays, Kotlin is also used in data science projects. So that covers that covers almost everything. I'm not going in the details of each of these, but this would motivate you to go and learn Kotlin today. Now, what are Kotlin language specific features that makes Kotlin a better language compared to its, com its competitors? Initially, Kotlin was introduced as a syntactical sugar of Java language which means that some of the boilerplate of Java was not there in Kotlin, even though persisting the functionalities that Java code was doing in the Kotlin language. It means that whatever Java was able to do, Kotlin was able to do it with concise and less boilerplate code, a code which is rather more easier to eyes and is more human readable. In this process, Kotlin solved many problems that Java had in those days. I'm talking about Java 6, Java 7. Now, with Java 8, Java 11, Java 17, those issues might not exist. But back in those days, Kotlin was able to solve them with much better approach. It should be noted that some of the Java features were not implemented in Kotlin. But over the years, Kotlin has created some language-specific features that makes it better language than Java as of now. Believe me, I myself being a Java developer in my initial days, there is no hatred towards Java. After all, it's a great language. So what, what is trending in Kotlin? 
why kotlin comes under top 5 languages there are many hot topics that are revolving around kotlin in recent years here are few of them which i feel that are most important and also i belong to that field so i am listing them down here first is kotlin multi platform which you can say as kmm or kmp i have very positive feeling about this because it might bring down the craze of flutter to a certain extent here the ios and android developers who want to write their code their ui in swift and kotlin will continue to write their ui in these languages but the business logic will be shared across ios project android project and in future it might be shared with javascript projects as well so you will have a same common business logic code base but on the top of that the ui layer you will write in those specific languages like for ios you will write ui in swift ui for android you will write ui in kotlin another hot topic is compose you might have heard of jetpack compose from android this compose is not different from that jetpack compose because compose is built on top of jetpack compose using the same concepts and same libraries which means that if you have created a ui using jetpack compose for android applications you can by tweaking a little bit you can use that code using compose sdk or compose libraries and compile them to launch as a website or to create a web app out of it of course there is a huge road map for that and it's not yet ready not only javascript you can actually create ui for mac windows and linux that's awesome right together these two ideas compose and kotlin multi platform target a very specific issue that forced developers to use flutter to create beautiful and cross platform ui what is flutter's usp flutter's usp is building ui that can be built or deployed as an native application for both the both the popular mobile pl- platforms and even for the web now for the desktop as well as for the embedded devices that's the usp of flutter so developers started redesigning the ui by writing a single code base and deploying it for these many platforms but now since the arrival of jetpack compose and swift ui where you create uis declaratively the difference in creating ui for these two native platforms is not much different so you can keep on running your existing applications which were developed in native uh, languages you need not rewrite them instead you need to just just take out your common business logic write in the kotlin language share it as a module for your native applications and then use it you need not write a new flutter application if you want feature parity in both of your applications honestly before jetpack compose android ui was a mess you had to create ui using xml which which made android applications too bloated or too unmaintainable for any developer but with jetpack compose that problem is gone over even jetpack compose has an awesome animation framework if you don't know if you don't know what i mean watch my two videos demonstrating a same animation made in flutter as well as in jetpack compose and believe me the number of lines i have written in that code in jetpack compose are lesser compared to flutter don't go in the deep just compare that after watching these videos you will realize how easy it is to write jetpack compose ui even for ios you can write the same animation using swift ui okay now the third point coroutines a coroutine just like a thread in java runs a single piece of code in a separate thread but with an exception in case of threads the code runs in a single thread for its entire lifetime but in coroutines the code execution can pause itself in one thread and later when it's the right time it can execute itself again from the paused state in a separate thread not on that thread where it is stopped these are some of the kotlin language only specific features which are very exciting and can get you going now let's see what are the future plans of kotlin Kotlin has a very short and crisp roadmap for the 2022 year. Their main focus will be to improve the Kotlin plugin for the IDE, making the development cycle faster for developers. Kotlin compiler will be completely rewritten. I guess that would be Kotlin 2.0. With Kotlin 2.0, let me tell that Kotlin 1.7 
is the latest version of Kotlin. Two more things where they want to improve their features is Kotlin for server applications and Kotlin for multi-platform applications. Okay, you might be excited to learn Kotlin, but do you know from where you have to start? Of course, there is no better place to learn Kotlin or any other language or any other framework other than the official documentations itself. But that can be too overwhelming if you are starting from fresh or you could be lost. So I suggest that start with example section under play on kotlinlang.org website. Here you will learn about all the key and basic features of the language, followed by Kotlin koans if you wish to challenge yourself. Remember, writing code is very important. Reading it like a novel will not help. At last, you can do the hands-on section which will help you integrate various libraries to solve real-world problems. And don't forget, majority of Android examples are in Kotlin language as well. So if you want to become an Android developer, you got to use Kotlin language. I believe that you might be pumped up to learn Kotlin and use this language in any use case that you want. Honestly, there is no personal benefit here. I personally love this language because I migrated myself from Java language to Kotlin and I have seen the differences. So now I use it wherever I can. For creating Android applications, I use Kotlin. For creating a server-side REST APIs, I use Kotlin. Maybe, God knows, I might use Kotlin for data science as well. So if you like this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up and share this video across your friend circle so that everyone knows about this language and they might, if they are interested, they might learn it. Also, if you are new to this channel and hasn't subscribed yet, do subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss out on the tutorials that I create on this channel. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one.